4D simulations are very helpful in that they point out critical phases of construction and potential schedule conflicts or risks. We'll first need to have a proper schedule. Let's examine the components making up our simple schedule in CSV format. We have columns containing the tasks or activity title and the expected start and end dates. The precedence numbers indicate dependency, but those are already reflected as well in the dates. We'll open Timeliner module and go to the Links tab. Right-click under the Name column and choose Add Link. Here we get an idea of the file formats that Navisworks supports, such as Microsoft Project, Primavera, and of course CSV. Let's select CSV. Navigate to our schedule file, and a field selector dialog appears, asking us to map the columns of our schedule properly to the Timeliner columns. Timeliner correctly interpreted our fields, most importantly title and start and end dates. We can also choose to import another field, but for our purposes now, this is enough. In the Name column, right-click the New Link and select Rebuild Task Hierarchy from Link. Now let's go to the Tasks tab, where all of our recently imported data is displayed. Our next objective is to tie model elements to these tasks through this Attach column. This is where Search and Selection sets will allow us to group elements that belong to the same task. Let's take a look at what new sets we need to define in order to accomplish the 4D simulation. As we can imagine, construction occurs by level, so we will be defining sets not only by element type, but also by level. Let's define a set for the lower level retaining walls. Then for the lower level columns. We'll now group the exterior walls by level. We have to perform the find items from within a scene view displaying the architectural shell. We can search on stucco and from the level selected in the selection tree. Let's first try this for level 1 and we'll update this set. Now the exterior walls on level 2, etc. And in so doing we very quickly can associate model elements to schedule tasks. Now we'll create a selection set for the roof. Here in this sheet, we laid out the suggested search criteria that will find the appropriate elements for the entire schedule and the selection from which you should search. This will be handy for when you're completing the 4D simulation in your own exercise. Let's apply some of these criteria to the structural elements. First for the beams. And now for the shear walls. Here we have created all the sets to construct up to level 2. Let's scroll through to confirm that we in fact captured the elements to the sets that we expected. Now we'll be linking these sets of elements directly to the tasks to which they belong. We'll right-click in the Attach column and choose Attach Selection Set, and then navigate through the file hierarchy to the right set.
For, for each task, we need to define a phase type. There are three predefined activity types, construction, demolition, and temporary. Users can define new ones as well. These will control the method of displaying the 3D elements, both colors and transparency. Now with our model and schedule linked, we can run a 4D simulation. From the Simulate tab, we'll choose Settings, which opens a dialog with many options for the simulation playback. For now, let's set the interval size to 10%, meaning the percent of the total play we can step through manually on the fast-forward control. Let's also change the playback duration to 15 seconds. Click Play to playback the entire simulation. We see how the items appear in scene transparent at the start date and end up in their default model appearance upon completion. This was according to the settings in the Configure tab. There's also a timeline from the start to end of the project, which allows us to see still shots mid-construction at any point in the project.